The market was in rocket mode today with the SPY and S&P 500 up 2.5% nearly on the day. This basically started last night during the election counting when it was apparent that Trump was going to win. Futures were ripping. Crypto was ripping. And we finally broke out of this resistance zone here at 585. We've been highlighting this in our videos for the last two or three weeks now that this was a large resistance zone. We had positive gamma exposure and obviously the market was just waiting for this trigger event to make its move. We've already breached the first large gamma exposure level at the 590 strike. That's a big level that we were highlighting last week. And now the gamma exposure structure has continued to shift higher. We're seeing large positive gamma between 590 and 600. Furthermore, if we just pull our chart down here a little bit, you can see how far up this gamma exposure extends. We usually don't see this on the major indices but we have been seeing it uh, today on the SPY and for the last couple of weeks on the S&P 500, and that is positive gamma exposure at these higher strikes. On SPY, it's going all the way up to the 620 strike. So this is an extremely bullish signal. It doesn't mean that we're going to rocket higher in a straight line up into these levels, but what it's showing you is that market participants are positioning for a large year-end move. And so we expect maybe a little bit more upside tomorrow. We've got the FOMC and some other things we're going to talk about that could bring some volatility in the mix. But any pullback here in the coming days could be an opportunity for buy the dip uh, for further move into Thanksgiving and Christmas. Sean, I know you've been watching the volatility index very closely. Why don't you talk about what you're seeing there? Thanks, Anthony. There were several signs on the VIX that pointed to, uh, you know, good possibility of seeing the VIX move lower over the last few days. We saw a lot of volume at the lower strikes. And sure enough, what happened was we had the, the VIX gap down, uh, you know, closed at 1626. And that's basically almost to the bottom Keltner channel here. So um, on the daily chart, which the, uh, the VIX in recent history has not really visited you know, the, the bottom end of the daily chart. So we may s still see the VIX drop lower, but I'm starting to look ahead toward a possible VIX spike and a retracement in the context of what you just said, which is this uptrend and a market that looks pretty strong and probably still has more upside ahead. Let's just take a look at the heat map for the S&P 500 for today. You can see broadly green across the market tech performing really well and tech services, but look at financials. Financials, JP Morgan up nearly 12%, Bank of America up 8%, Goldman Sachs up 13%, Wells Fargo up 13%. I mean, this is crazy. These are moves you don't even see during earnings for these type of companies. Basically, we've seen weakness only in a few sectors, and those are the more defensive sectors like healthcare, consumer non-durables, uh, and utilities. The rest of the market, though, seems to be in rocket mode, as we mentioned at the beginning of the video. So we'll see if that continues. For now, it looks like market participants are positioning for higher moves. But I just want to bring your attention to the Treasury yield curve. This is the 10-year Treasury minus two-year Treasury. And this is something we've brought up in the past. You know, back here, let me just make this a little bit bigger. Back here in August of this year, we uninverted on the yield curve. And as most market participants know, an uninversion of the yield curve has preceded every recession uh, going back almost for the last 100 years. And of course, you can see here, this is just going back to the 80s. But if you just go back further in the 1900s, this has occurred nearly almost before every recession. Recessions highlighted by these gray bars here. And that's exactly where we are now. But I just want to point out, if you notice, this uninversion usually takes some time to play out before recession hits. Uh, historically, that's been anywhere from six to 18 months before the recession actually begins. And so I think, you know, just given the election results, just given where we are in this bullish cycle, along with market participant positioning, this could be further into 2025 if it materializes at all. But I just want to bring that to your guys' attention. That being said, there are some major sectors moving here in the market. Look at small caps up nearly 6% today. This is a level we have been watching this 225 level 
uh, going back all the way to summertime. This has been a major resistance for small caps, finally breaking out today into these larger gamma exposure concentrations. We mentioned this on Monday in our YouTube video. The 230 to 240 level is going to be a major gamma effect uh, on IWM if it can break out of this resistance zone. Well, that happened before anyone could take advantage of it. The market oftentimes will do this. Um, so you had to be positioned ahead of election night. Uh, but it is interesting that we've come right into this dealer cluster zone. We're still seeing volume, though, at these higher strikes. You know, these, this is significant volume up to 150, 200,000 contracts coming in at these different strikes here today. And a lot of that was coming in at the 240 to 250 range. So this is signaling that market participants believe there is further upside in small caps. That could take a little bit longer to play out, of course. After the big move today, we might see a little consolidation, but small caps, IWM in particular, is going to be something that we're watching and potentially playing in our community Discord. Anthony, yeah, fitting in with the uh, small cap theme, although tangentially related, I wanted to look at GDX. So in our Discord uh, channel, we were looking at GLD, you know, which is gold today. And so they don't always move in tandem. You know, GDX is the miners, but uh, the miners do tend to have a lot of uh, smaller companies in the index. What caught my eye today is that gold really took a big hit. You can see it, it gapped actually below the lower Keltner channel on the daily chart and uh, ended up closing back above it, you know, at 3864. And that's, um, you know, even though the chart, you know, it looks like it broke. Uh, a trend line that had gone back some months. If we go and look at the gamma picture, we still have positive gamma. We have strikes at 40, 42, and 45. That might be interesting. And I will say, you know, price got hung up kind of at this uh, negative gamma cluster at 38. And that makes sense. A lot of times we see these larger clusters, whether positive or negative, you know, serving as a magnet for price. We do have some negative gamma still on the screen for the near term uh, dates. And a lot of the positive gamma seems to be situated, uh, you know, a little farther out. So I don't want to say that GDX is going to, you know, be a rocket ship just starting tomorrow or anything, but we could easily see this move up uh, over the next two to three months back toward these higher 40, 42, 45 levels. So uh, to me, you know, this looks, even to see this thing get back to the middle Keltner channel or the whole moving average, um, you know, somewhere between 40 and 41 would be just kind of like a first stop. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, GDX definitely one to watch. Next, I want to talk about Tesla. Tesla up nearly 15% today. What a crazy move. And I got to hand it to you, Sean. You really nailed this in Monday night's video. You know, you highlighted all this positive gamma exposure here uh, on Tesla as potentially market positioning ahead of the election, assuming that, you know, Elon Musk, who's been campaigning with Trump, is going to benefit in some respects with Tesla. Now, I don't know if that's going to be the case, but the market clearly thinks so, that him and Tesla are going to have some benefit uh, from this administration. And so we definitely saw that playing out today. And the gamma exposure was telling us that uh, earlier last week. And so here we are approaching this big 300 strike. You can see how large this is from a gamma exposure perspective. And continuing today, we saw volume, which is highlighted by these blue bars, over 150,000 contracts coming in at that 300 strike. So we're not even there yet. There's still 12 points to go uh, before Tesla reaches that big 300 strike. So definitely a great call on Tesla. Yeah, thanks, Anthony. It's not always that we have uh, a really nice uh, GEC set up in a one week time frame, but that just stood out very clearly at that at that moment. I'll go over one of the tickers that wasn't as successful in the ultra short term <laughs> that I brought up last week, but I still think it's inter interesting, and that's Coca Cola uh, KO. You know, we were close to the dealer cluster zone when we talked about it, and basically all that's happened is that we went deeper into the zone and we actually went a little bit below the zone. Um, you know, so it's been a little bit more volatile maybe than uh, than people would think of Coca-Cola as being. We have this zone right here between 64 and 65, and we're just below that. Look at the volume today at 70, 
which is interesting. And we have these big gamma clusters that are still up here at the uh, 67 and a half and 70 uh, areas. We still have positive overall gamma. Uh, you know, most of the interest is still to the upside. I will say for those that are momentum traders, you may not like that the chart has been in a downtrend uh, really for a couple of months now. So that I would say is a negative. And we did get below this trend line here. But I think what Gamma might be telling us is that it's due for at least some sort of an oversold bounce. And, uh, you know, Coca-Cola is one of those companies where if we do have uh, continued inflation of nominal prices, uh, this is one of those companies that will be able to raise prices and pass them on to uh, customers uh, at least as well as anybody else could. You know, it, it's it's an item that a lot of people aren't willing to just abandon. Don't forget, you can access all of the tools on our dashboard, including our gamma exposure analysis and option flow analytics by heading over to geeksoffinance.com. I'll put the link in the description below. Also, definitely check out our community Discord. It's absolutely free. We've got a ton of great traders in there talking market analysis and trade ideas every single day. You don't want to miss that. I'll put a link in the description below for that as well. Thanks so much, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.